guys, it's me Stormy and it's time to talk about the new moon that will be coming on January 24th at four degrees of Aquarius, which means we will end our Capricorn um, moon cycle for just a little bit and we will move into the Aquarian moon cycle. And I always think that the new moon that happens is like the um, birthday present for the sign that just celebrated the birthday. So happy birthday Aquarians and this is your new moon gift. And I actually feel like this particular new moon to me feels like it's a lot of fun feels like there's a lot of electricity there's a lot of um eccentricity available to it and it comes along with a bit of adventure as well now first and foremost because this is at four degrees of Aquarius it's actually four degrees in 22 minutes if you want to be very exact with your chart so people who have placements between about zero degrees and eight degrees of any of the fixed signs because Aquarius is a fixed sign. So if you have Aquarius, Taurus, Leo, or Scorpio, if you have prominent placements at these particular um, degrees in your chart, you're definitely gonna wanna see what's going on with them, what's happening, where is it impacting. But first things first, make sure you locate that four degrees of Aquarius on your chart. Now the actual aspect that is happening when we have a new moon, just in case you're new here or you're just learning to study, is that the aspect is that the sun and the moon are in conjunction with each other. They're there, they're holding hands, they're working together to share energy. So this is actually the darkest, calmest time in the moon cycle. So this is why we say this is a beautiful time to plant your seeds of intention. What do you want here? What's the fresh start, the fresh perspective that you want? And remember, because it's dark, you guys, we plant our seeds of intention in the dark. We don't know exactly how they're going to blossom. It's very much so that idea of being in the now, planting the intention, and then detaching from the outcome. You have to wait and see how the universe is going to best deliver it for you and to you. So you plant those seeds in the dark, and as the moon cycle continues to go, we will get to see what blossoms. Now remember, Remember, moon cycles are always connected to each other as well. So while we're beginning something fresh or new or just a new life, new perspective at this particular moon, you look back to that lunar eclipse that we had, the full moon on January 10th, and you can see some progress that you're making just from that particular time. Now you're gonna wanna watch your progress again as we get to the full moon happening February 9th of 2020, okay? So kind of watch your timings in between. And this is why I encourage people to keep an astrology journal so you can see the progress that you're making because sometimes, I don't know about you guys, let me just speak for me. Sometimes what happens for me, especially when I'm taking on something really new and the energy of Aquarius is innovative, right? It is new. It is uncertain, but it is new. When I'm taking on something new, um, I... I'm not great always in the beginning, you know, so I feel like I haven't actually made any progress or sometimes life just gets heavy and I'm doing a lot of learning and growing up over here and I feel like I'm not really progressing. And so if I have that journal or I have something, I can turn around and I can look back and say, look, it is working. These things are working out. My actions are in alignment with the flow of where my life is supposed to be going. And that is so reassuring because I think there's nothing like feeling like you're spinning or like you're not progressing, right? So I encourage you this year, maybe if you haven't, um, try keeping an astrology journal so that you can track and see how your actions are, are showing up in your life, okay? All right, so all of that business said. So that is the actual aspect that is happening when we have a new moon. We plant the seeds of intention at this time. The first two weeks after a new moon are the strongest time to plant those seeds of intention. Although you do have access to the energy for four weeks, that first two is the most potent. Now at this particular moon, like I said, I like it. I feel like there's some fun and there's some adventure and there's some kind of, it's very, um, it's very loving and friendly, but like platonic love, you know, friendly, brotherhood, groupings, let's, you know, high five with the bros and the chicks, right? So the other aspect we have got going at this particular moon is that not only do we have the moon in Aquarian energy, but we also have that Aquarian energy making our one really big major aspect to Uranian energy. So not only do we have this new moon happening in Aquarius, but then we've got it making this one really big major aspect to its ruling planet, Aquarius. So this moon is going to come square 
Uranus. So you've got Aquarius taking on its ruling energy. Now Uranus just in general, much like Aquarius, is about change. There's a little bit of disruption there. It's, it, it is uncertain sometimes because you're not exactly sure what you're innovating, but you are innovating. You're moving something forward. This is a very futuristic kind of energy. Now this Uranian energy is in the stubborn energy of Taurus, which is an earth sign. So this gives us an indicator with this particular energy that maybe something that is actually changing um, is going to be something in a very material plane. Maybe you're having to think advancement. Maybe you're having to look for support. You're looking for groupings to support you. You're looking to be a part of humanitarian efforts. Uh, maybe you're stepping out in your community a little bit more. You're getting connected with friends or social groupings that you feel like can support you. But ultimately, it's bringing change from your material world as well. This square is going to stimulate you into an act, into action because when we have a square in astrology, it's the 911 of the aspects, right? It says, I'm going to put you under so much pressure that I'm going to make you take action. So sometimes if we're not aware of what's going on, right, you could see your fellows around you or maybe you could have an angry outburst, right? It could just be, this is a lot of fixed energy and we're being put under pressure and fixed energy does not like to be budged around. So you could have an angry outburst. Absolutely, the square could bring that. But if you do have the angry outburst, remember you're gonna need to clean that up. And sometimes you gotta have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough, you know what I'm saying? So try not to lose your cookies in any way that's going to be absolutely damaging, but if it happens, you get to see where maybe you need to adjust how you're coming at something for sure. Now, the other thing I think about under this square is, first of all, it can produce a little bit of anxiety because like I said, there's a lot of uncertainty to the table, but there's there's adventure behind this as well because the square may be saying, I need you to assert yourself. I need you to stand up for us. I need you to stand up for this area. I need you to stand up for our values. What do we believe in, right? So it's a very good energy that is not only heated and electric enough to stimulate you into action, but then you get the benefit of a square as well. So one of the other things I do think of it because um, Uranus is an outer planet is globally. You could find yourself a part of a very big global conversation or a community conversation or something like that. And ultimately what's trying to happen is you're trying to come together in some area of support, something where you have a mutual set of values in some way, shape or form. So plant your seeds of intention. If you need a tribe, if you need friends, if you've been feeling like you're not connected to the right people, if you have some people in your life and you feel like this is not it, you know what I'm saying? It may be time to make that disconnection over this next few weeks, something like that. You also have the gift of looking more objectively at everything that's going on because Aquarian energy is an energy that is much more in that air energy. So it's much more of the intellect. So it looks at things a little bit more objectively instead of so emotionally because sometimes emotionally we can stay in situations whether it be the job the relationship a thinking pattern that are a little bit more sta stagnant and we need some help to break out of those things in order to make our grounded reality and our insides kind of have a little bit of peace right now we've got some other friends interacting at this particular moon as well now first of all venus and mars are going to be in a square to each other and this is what's funny to me about venus and mars is they don't it doesn't matter how they interact with each other these two are the lovers they chase each other across the zodiac all year long and they really enjoy the chase right so as these two are even coming into a square one of the things i do think of is that with money or with relationships, because that's what Venus is about, right? Relationships, money, diplomacy, harmony. And Mars is kind of harsh in the mellow right now, or vice versa. Mars is over there in the energy of Sagittarius. He wants to do, he wants to gather information. He wants to share information. He wants to investigate some things. So if informations are coming up or a situation has been stagnant and you're starting to see information or you're starting to experience situations with your, rom your romantic relationships or your money, you may be willing to make some changes and and that square helps you as well. But again, I would tell you with these squares kind of crossing each other, please make sure just not to lose your cookies in some way that uh, results in results in outcomes that you would not enjoy like jail. Okay, <laughs> so try to keep that uh, keep that in mind. The other thing with this crossing happening is it can just bring some unpredictability um, into these areas. So if you're feeling a little bit of anxiety about money, like what am I going to do? How am I going to move this forward? Oh, is that book deal finally going to go through? Am I going to get the house? Whatever it is, anxiety is normal with Uranian energy. So to kind of have a helper there, lean a little bit into the Neptunian energies and try and ground down, do some meditating if you can for sure. 
Now, Venus is not done touching on other energies in this particular zodiac at this moon, so not quite yet. Venus is also going to sextile Jupiter here. And Venus and Jupiter are our benefic planets. So when these two are working together, when planets have sex, that's good for us, you guys. It's not only an opportunity, but it is an opportunity we will take intelligent advantage of moving on, right? So we've had some uncertainty. We've got some different coming to the table. Now these two that are about bringing benefit to our table are going to interact in an opportunity for you. This is your opportunity. It could be a lucky break. It could just bring some chill to the table. It could also um, bring a big idea, right? Maybe the change you needed to see is, oh my gosh, if I do this, I can take on this big idea. I can, I can bring this into my structure. I can create this. In some ways, I do feel like there could be a romantic component that comes in here. Um, I would just be mindful of that. So if that's your story this month, please put it in the description box down below. But ultimately, this brings new prospects for new opportunities to the table or a way that an opportunity can actually benefit. Now, if you have been having a struggle in your money, your relationship, something like that, this can bring your, your opportunity of how to fix that. Is this couples counseling? Do I need financial counseling? Do I need to learn how to invest? Whatever it is, that provides your opportunity right here at this new moon. So what do you do with all of this? Take it and put it together and make soup, right? <laughs> so at this new moon, we're going to plant these seeds of intention for a new direction, for some innovation, for some fun, for some tribe, for some support. And maybe it's about my money. Maybe it's about my relationships. But I certainly need to break free of something or get out of the rut with something. And I will ask to set the stage for the new opportunity. Show me my new opportunity. Show me and give me the courage to take advantage of that opportunity. Oh, universe, please help me stop being so stubborn and get out of my own way so that I can and take advantage of this new moon energy to start this adventure or to continue this adventure in the way that is fit, fun, and innovative for my life, right? There's a lot of intuition and a lot of genius available at this moon. All right, you guys, I hope this has been informative. Like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I can't wait to see you in Astrology 101 and 102. There's just a couple weeks left to get signed up. So sign up, come start studying with us in February. And if not, I look forward to seeing you around the channel and in our community anyways. I love you guys so much. Bye.